Welcome back. The objective of this video is to use transformations to sketch graphs of polynomial functions. So we're going to start working with things that are higher than just degree 2 or degree 3. And we're also going to use the leading coefficient test to determine end behavior of graphs and functions. Really what we're doing in this video today is we're going to be talking more about general shapes and general direction of and behavior of graphs of these functions without getting bogged down in the nitty-gritty of plotting specific points. We're just going to have a general idea of what these graphs are going to look like by the information that's provided to us. Objective one here uh, graphs of polynomial functions, just to give you a sense of what those look like. Uh, they're continuous and unbroken, and they have smooth curves and no sharp edges. We've got a couple diagrams down here. The ones on the left on the top and bottom are polyno graphs of polynomial functions, showing they're, they're continuous, whereas here on the right this one is broken. Okay, and they have smooth rounded turns as opposed to like an absolute value function which has a, a sharp break in it. We're going to be looking at polynomial functions. The easiest ones of course are monomials. Uh, f of x equals x to some exponent where our exponent is greater than zero. Uh, if our exponent is one we've got a linear equation or linear function. If n is two we've got a quadratic or the graph is a parabola. Extending beyond that, if n is an even value, x to the second, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, etc., our graph will flatten as n increases. So our graph, like a parabola, comes down and goes back up. Uh, something a higher degree might flatten towards the bottom and then extend back up. Okay, now we may have x-intercepts, we may not, depends, we're not going to get bogged down in that, but with the, the higher degree, the longer and the flatter it's going to be at the top or the bottom. We could have that same kind of similar parabola that opens, uh, opens down as, as well, okay? So it could look something like that. If n is odd, our cubic x to the fifth, the graph is going to cross the x-axis at the x-intercept. So uh, certainly a cubic function is, is kind of the easiest one to do. And of course we can shift these around and move those. So it'll look something like that. We'll do some samples um, sketching the following graphs. Again, more review of transformations here. Uh, we're going to compare everything. These are all cubic, so we'll compare them all to the graph of f of x equals x cubed, which I've already entered onto each of these graphs. In A here, we have the opposite of x cubed plus 2. We knew in our quadratics, we shifted our parabola. This was a reflection, okay? It, our parabola is open down. So this negative sign is going to create a reflection of our original graph. The, we don't have anything in the quantity. Our plus two is gonna be a vertical shift. So we're gonna shift up two units and we're gonna reflect. So I'm gonna shift up two units here. But now, instead of rising as our x's get positive, I'm actually gonna fall as our x's get positive because we're gonna do the opposite. So this particular graph is going to be shaped like this. And we're going to go opposite. So just a, not a perfect point by point, but a reflection on that one. So where our x's were positive, now we get the same result when our x's are negative. In B, we have x cubed minus 5, positive. So we're going to have the same shape as x squared. We don't have a reflection here. Uh, and we're just going to shift down 5 units. Or our cubic function is going to look something like this. So 
graph that and that's gonna head down so and I put the arrows on here we see we're gonna refer to this in a little bit as our end behavior okay what happens as X approaches you know goes out to infinity or X goes to negative infinity we're going to talk about the end behavior of these graphs. You can see the end behavior of our first one is different than their end behavior of the second one. And then finally, the x plus 2 quantity cubed plus 0. So we don't have a, a vertical shift, but we're going to have a horizontal shift. And we're going to shift two units to the left. I know that's a positive 2 but we're going to do the opposite of what we're looking at there. So we're going to go negative two units to the left and then give a sense of what our cubic is going to look like. So just some sketching graphs with some basic transformations there. Objective two is to introduce the leading coefficient test. So we're going to work with a function f of x equals a times x to the n. So our coefficient is a, our leading coefficient. And what we really are going to concern ourselves here is our coefficient a, is it positive or is it negative? Where n, now n is our exponent, and we care about whether n is even or n is odd. We know that if n is even, our graph is going to look something like this. It's going to look a little bit like a parabola. Where n is odd, our graph is going to cross the x-axis. So if n is odd, we might have a graph that looks like this. And our n's are going to go in opposite directions. So n is odd. Our n's go in opposite directions, where if n is even, our n's go in the same direction. So the leading coefficient test tells us a couple of things. When n is odd, so when our exponent is odd, so if we have an odd exponent, our n's go in opposite directions. We just covered that. So we've got that listed here. In sample one, we can see here that this is falling as x's get smaller, as x approaches negative infinity, our graph goes to negative infinity. And as x heads towards infinity, our output heads towards positive infinity. And that's the case when n is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, is greater than zero. So something like 5x cubed. Our graph might look something like that. Now, when n is odd, and this might be like an x to the fifth one, now, though, our n behavior is the opposite. This was our reflection from a little bit earlier. So this one is going to be, you know, like negative 2x to the fifth. Our a value here is negative and the opposite is going to take place. As x approaches infinity, our graph is going to go to negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, our graph is going to go to positive infinity. So if you remember your parent function, if you remember x cubed is a graph that goes like this, then the opposite is going to take place if we have negative x cubed, our graph is going to go the other way. We're going to have different end behavior. You can see here as we, we move to the right, our graph is increasing. Here as we move to the right, our graph is decreasing. Odd exponent, our graphs go in opposite directions. And then need to memorize you know, your parent function and just do the opposite when it's negative. It's going to be a reflection. And we have a similar thing with even exponents. So when n is even, so this is like 
um, this might be the graph of something like 3x to the fourth power. So like our parabola, x squared, our parabola opens up and sure enough, we have an even exponent, so our end behavior is the same. They both go in the same direction. So if the exponent is even, the end behavior, right side and left hand, is the same. End behavior is the same for both right and left. But if our leading coefficient is positive, our end behavior goes to positive infinity. If our leading coefficient is negative, maybe this is negative one-third x squared, we're going in the same direction, but this time it's a reflection. Now we're heading towards negative infinity. Okay, so an even exponent, our ends are both going to go up, or they're both going to go down, and um, what tells us whether they go up or down, whether our leading coefficient is positive, then it goes up, and if the leading coefficient is negative, it goes down. So we can use the leading coefficient test to describe the right-hand and left-hand behavior of each of the following graphs. So our n, our exponent is 3, or it's odd, so we know that our end behavior is going to be opposite directions. Our a value is 2, or positive 2. That's what we really care about. So our right-hand behavior, as we go to positive infinity, is going to go to positive infinity. And our left-hand behavior is going to go to negative infinity. So this graph is going to look something like our normal cubic function. It's going to look something like that. In sample 2, our exponent is 4 or even, so we know that our end behaviors are going to be the same. They're either going to go both go to positive infinity or both go to negative infinity. Since our a is negative 1 or negative, our end behavior is going to be down. So our right-hand behavior is going to head towards negative infinity, and our left-hand behavior is going to go to negative infinity. So this graph might look something like that. A little summary of right-hand and left-hand behavior using the leading coefficient test. A little sense of what polynomial graphs are going to look like just based on the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient. And we'll have more practice with that when I see you in class.